Hey there, how's it going? Guess what time it is? It's Game Jam time. Game Jam Addict. And this time we're taking part in the one minute jam. Before you get the wrong idea, no, the jam is not one minute long. I'm not sure if I could even do that. I could probably find a way though. I mean, I have made a game in 10 minutes before. All right, I'm already off topic. The actual restriction is games made for the jam need to have gameplay that lasts for one minute or less. I love approaching design with this kind of constraint as it makes you really boil down the essence of the mechanics and just focus on the fun part. Before the jam, I didn't have any set idea or mechanic that I wanted to force other than I really wanted to make a game that had 1-bit art. I made a game using a 1-bit art asset pack recently and I really enjoyed it and thought I wanted to try it myself. The jam started while I was streaming some pixel art so we took a quick break to see the theme. Oh, and then we'll do whatever second as well because ditto should be fast. The jam started, let's go check the theme. Colorful. So the theme is colorful, and by what you saw, you could probably guess, I'm not really a fan. First off, it really hurts the idea of doing one-bit art which I was thinking about. And second, making games that focus on color have a problem as a lot of people have varying degrees of colorblindness. Personally, I've always tried to make experiences that don't rely on color as a main mechanic because of this. I definitely didn't have any ideas popping into my head right away, and I was kind of at a loss for what I wanted to do. Luckily, I wasn't planning to work on the jam that day anyway, so I was able to let it mull over for a while. My plan was to do my usual brainstorming session with chat the next day, which means that for now, it's a future me problem. And before we get to that guy, I want to thank Southern New Hampshire University for sponsoring this video. Do you feel like experience is holding you back from pursuing the career you want? Southern New Hampshire University has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the country. They feature over 200 degree programs focused on getting you started in or advancing in a career that you'll love. One program I think you might like is the Game Development Program. You'll learn to create realistic and dynamic gameplay experiences while working with game physics, AI, and assets for 2D, 3D, and interface design. Create projects with languages like C++, C Sharp, and Java, as well as using engines like Unreal to create playable experiences for a variety of platforms. All of Southern New Hampshire University's programs are extremely flexible. There are no set class times, allowing you to work when and where you want. If you started college and never finished, Southern New Hampshire University will let you transfer up to 90 credits so you don't have to start over. Southern New Hampshire University is also radically affordable. Their online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation and haven't increased in over 10 years. They also feature an active virtual community of students. Join clubs, attend mixers, you'll get the whole college experience entirely online. So if you want to kick off a new career, or take your current one to the next level, click the link in the description to get more information and browse all of their programs. We now return you to future me trying to figure out what I'm going to do for this jam. That night after my stream, I saw a video of someone using a Wii remote to play a rhythm game of some sort. Other than getting into the Guitar Hero and Rock Band phase years ago, like everyone else, I don't really play rhythm games due to the fact of, how do you say, I'm really bad at them but I was really intrigued by the mechanic of the closing circle that you needed to get the pointer into before it closed too far. Quick reference, I found out later that the game I saw is called Osu. If it looks interesting to you, it might be worth checking out. And just like that, without even thinking about it, I started to make a little prototype to see if I could make something like this work myself. It really wasn't that difficult to create a circle on screen and have it begin to shrink down once it appeared. It's just a simple tween in and out, fast in, slow out, gives it a nice pop and then shrink effect. I almost instantly hated my first thought, which was to have the cursor in the circle when it reached a certain size. I guess that could work if you're syncing it up to music, but I didn't want to go that route because it's something I haven't done before and I feel like it would be a little bit of a nightmare for a jam. I don't know how you actually trigger the success in Osu. This idea is just what I took away from initially seeing the video and trying to figure something out for myself. So I just made a simple change that you needed to click in the circle before it fully shrunk down. This let me trigger spawning a new circle the moment you clicked on the other one, which meant the faster you clicked, the faster the new circle appeared. This makes the mechanic less rhythm-based and more reaction-based, which I think will be easier to work with for a game jam situation. At this point, I literally just had you click the circle, a new one appears, and it counts up a number. I had my daughter test it out using my phone as a timer. I hadn't added one of those yet because I didn't want to do it in case the game wasn't actually fun. And as the timer beeped and she looked at her score, I got the four best words that any game dev can ever hear. Can I try again? She played for like 10 more minutes with only the circle clicking working, so I took that as a good sign that there's something engaging with this core mechanic. After that was a bit more busy work of adding in a timer and a high score tracker, but then I realized I had a problem. The game is super engaging, but it's lacking one key element. The freaking theme. There's nothing colorful about this in any way. So now unfortunately I have to shoehorn in color in some way. 
Since the game is already a quick reaction game, I thought, what if I made it a color recognition game? I just want to give a quick warning. The game begins to get a bit flashy while I work on it here for a little while. I'll be addressing it in a moment as it becomes an important part, but I wanted to warn anyone that could have sensitivity issues to it. I did my best to use clips that are slower and don't flash quite as much, but I just wanted to give the heads up. I was using a hidden rectangle sprite in the background as the spawn area for the circles. Whenever I call the spawn circle function, it only chooses a point that overlaps the rectangle. This keeps the circle from spawning too close to the edges as well as giving me control later to work around UI elements. Instead of keeping it invisible, I decided to make it visible and have it change colors. Then the player would need to click the circle on screen that had the same color as the background. At first, it's just one circle that matches, but once you reach a certain score, more circles would spawn at the same time, with only one being the correct color. It was getting a bit hard to keep track of, so I made the incorrect color circle smaller. Half-heartedly thinking this could also help for those with color blindness, as I didn't know how to really make this work for them yet. The next morning, I was super excited with the progress I had made, and I showed it to my wife to get her opinion. And unfortunately, it didn't go well. She started playing and was quickly clicking the circles, getting a pretty good score. Then the timer ended, and instead of those four words that we love to hear as designers, she looked a bit pale, let out a long sigh, and squinted at the screen. Trying to be nice, she said she liked it, but the flashing from the background made her feel kind of ill, and she kind of had a headache now. Well, crap. I deflated instantly. Not only is there obviously a serious problem with the game, but I just made my wife feel bad, which is the last thing I ever want to do. I then had to start the stream for the day with a major rework to figure out. Making sure to warn my chat first, we tested some more. And while a lot of people didn't have issues with the flashing, the fact that more than zero said it made them feel bad, a little sick, or gave them a headache was all I needed to know. It had to be changed and can't stay like this. Being able to live test with viewers is one of the greatest parts about streaming game dev. If you'd like to see future projects and be able to give input, be sure to stop by and say hi at twitch.tv slash vimlark. I promise I won't try to make you sick or give you a headache. And while I'm plugging myself, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. While I discussed the issues with chat, we were pretty sure that it was the color background that was causing most of the issues. The faster you click, the more frequently it changed, which made everything feel worse the better you did. Not a great design strategy. So right off the bat, we made the target color background invisible again, and that helped a lot. Adding different shapes was suggested to replace the incorrect colored circles, and that seemed to help as well to make it stand out which one you're supposed to click. It did mean that the game wasn't really as colorful as it was before, but I'd rather have a fun game that scores worse on the theme than try to keep making the color aspect work when it just wasn't. So now it's more about recognizing shape and clicking on the circle instead of the color itself. I did think about adding a target color UI element to the top side or somewhere like that, but as this is a quick reaction game, I don't want to break the player's flow. With the different shapes, the player can just always click on the circle. It's a quick read that's still tricky, but keeps the player's focus and attention on the play area. If there was a target color UI element, the player would have to take their focus away from the play area, process the color being shown, relook at the play area, parse out which shape was the correct one, and then click it. Which just adds several extra steps to the mental load we're asking of the player, and I feel like it makes it less satisfying in my opinion. If the game is going to be about quick reflexes, let's double down on that and keep it as focused as possible. I did miss just the reaction test of the single circle, so we added in different game modes. We now have React and Identify, and each mode can be played with either a 30 or a 60 second timer. The Identify mode is the circle spawning with other shapes. The player will get two points for clicking the circle when it's over a certain size, one point if it's below that, and negative two points if they click anywhere that's not over the circle. I felt this was necessary to prevent people from spam clicking all over the place. And the scoring works the same in React mode, but there's no other shapes to distract you. By the next stream, I had played with the visuals a bit, and it ended up being pretty far from colorful. I gave the shapes a slight texture, drop shadow, and a big bright outline to make sure that they stand out. I made a checkerboard background that just infinitely scrolls to give some sort of movement to the screen without being too distracting. And since I want to try and keep the player's focus and attention in the play area, I have these bars that close in and sync with the timer so there's a quick visual reference when the timer is running out, without needing to look at the top corner of the screen. I actually really like the timer bars, I'm not sure why, I just really enjoy them. At this stage, everything is coming together pretty nicely. There's still a lot of polish needed, but the overall bones of the game were there. But as I shared the game out for playtesting with chat, and I played it more and more myself, I realized that I was always testing the 30 second timer. When testing the 60 second rounds, it just felt like it went on far too long. I know a 60 second round doesn't seem like a very long time, but when you're really focusing and reacting as quickly as you can, it feels like forever. It was pretty unanimous from everybody trying the game out in chat that we needed to adjust it because it was just too long. So instead, I changed it to a 15 second timer to really test your speed and make the round drag a lot less. We then spent the rest of the stream adding sound effects and debating what to call the game. 
I was pretty fixated on click the circle because that's all you do and that's all you needed to know. How do you play? Click the circle. What if there are other shapes? Click the circle. What if I click the circle? But what? Click the circle. So I was pretty much vetoing chat saying that this is what we're going to call the game. Then they gleefully pointed out to me that the buttons I had made were rectangles and I briefly thought about banning everyone. The core workings and mechanics of the game are all pretty much there and the rest of my time working on it was all about polish. Cleaning up the effects, updating the fonts, adding music and even more sound effects, and I updated the scoring to have a plus three if you're really fast and get the circle before it shrinks hardly at all. As I was updating the buttons to make them circles, I remembered that the jam had a theme and I should at least give it some lip service. So I googled colorful, found an image, stole the colors from it, and slapped it into my game. Which definitely made it brighter and more colorful. But personally, I like the dark look more. So I spent some extra time making a toggle button which would switch between a light and a dark mode. That way the players can choose which one they like and I'm still hitting the theme, kinda. It doesn't change everything. The buttons on the main screen don't change and there's a couple of glitches where it still leaves some colors there. But it works just fine when you're actually playing the game and that's all I really cared about. I finished everything up like the menus, how to play, credits, all that jazz and kept adding polish wherever I could. And in the end, this is Click the Circle. How many times can you click the circle in different game modes? Reaction can be tested for 15 or 30 seconds. Click the circle to start the timer and a new one will appear the moment the last one is clicked. The circle will begin to shrink immediately after being spawned. And depending on the size of the circle, when the player clicks it, they will receive a plus three, plus two, or plus one to their score. Clicking anywhere other than the circle will give the player a minus two to their score to encourage precision. The Identify mode works exactly the same, but as the player progresses, more and more other shapes will spawn along with the circle. There's no penalty for clicking on a shape that overlaps the circle. You just have to click the circle. This mode is tricky, with many having a deep-seated hatred for the octagon, and its round-ish shape. I'm really happy with this game, and I think it's a great example of how a very simple concept like clicking a circle can be made to be incredibly engaging. It actually performed really well in the jam, ranking in second place, which isn't bad considering I kind of tacked on the colorful theme at the very end. To be fair, the theme did help inspire and guide the game, with the different colors being changed into the shapes that are used in identify mode. But in the end, the theme was a bit light because the core mechanic just moved away from it. I chose to follow the fun, this is where it led me, and I'm very happy with it. Congrats to Color All for taking first place in the jam. The game is a lot of fun and definitely focuses on color. A well-deserved victory. If you would like to check out this game, as well as all of the other games from the jam, there are links in the description below. The highest scores I've been able to get in each of the modes are on screen right now. Are you able to beat them? Let me know in the comments. Come hang out on the streams and see the game dev process live, as well as chat about game design at twitch.tv slash vimlark. A huge thank you to everyone who was there, helped test, and give suggestions and feedback. You guys are awesome, and I really appreciate it. I also need to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially my video producer tier patrons like Baron Earth, and Mark Games, Lauren Morgan, Nightfall, Motsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Pixelator Gadzi, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, Some Dude, Straight Up Gruntled, and Warren Steven Rose. You're all wonderful people and I can't thank you enough for the support. Also thank you to the sponsor of this video, Southern New Hampshire University. Be sure to check out the link below to see all of their programs. I hope you've enjoyed and I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.